All right, so I'm gonna lay on this. So we're gonna use this to try to activate the hamstrings and glutes, which many of us need. So the reason we use the bolster is um, because when we're flat on the floor, um, we don't have really a lot of room for our back to be um, for our back to be. Um, Man, words are not my thing today. So when we lay on the floor, our back wants to compress and we start using our low back to do things. So when we do this, I make sure to have my legs hang off a little bit more. So we'll, yeah, you're, you're in a better position than I was. So your head can be either supported by your blocks or here, or you can just hang down. So <clears throat> when we use the back body, we want to, we want to be a little bit in service of the, the deeper abdominal. So we're going to do some cat-cow here. So you're just gonna inhale, sort of take your tail to the sky. The ribs generally press into the bolster. And then when you exhale, you're gonna feel the muscles in front of the lowest part of your belly pull back and up. You're gonna feel the low ribs maybe pull. And your tailbone generally drops when you do that, but that's not your, that's not your main goal. And then inhale again, stick the tail up to the sky. You might even lift your head if you want. And then exhale, let the body pull up from the pit of the pelvis before the ribs come up. Just try to make it as incremental as possible. Inhale. And then, usually, we go to do things like lifting our legs on the inhale. We're not going to do that. We're going to inhale. And then on the exhale, come to a less exaggerated cat pose and then lift your left leg. So your belly is still working in the, the deeper abdominals. You're not sucking it in. You're just giving a little harmony. And your left leg is up in the air, and you can, if you want to pulse it, you can. And then we'll take it down very slow. And then inhale. And then as you exhale, belly draws up just a little, and the right leg will go next. And then we'll see how that feels. Try to press the top of the non-lifted foot into the floor. You can pulse it if you want. take it down. Now, if you want, we could do both, in which case you've got a couple of options. You could tuck your fingers underneath the mat and sort of shove it forward. That part's going to be harder because less of your leg will end up on the bolster, or you can take the hands behind you and shove the mat towards your feet. So your choice. Next time you exhale, though, the belly comes in just enough, and then both legs can lift. If you want, you can try. If you can structurally take your ankles together, try that. And squeeze them together. Whatever touches is fine. Sometimes knees touch first. And then breathe and let them out. You're going to take them out as wide as they can go. And then exhale, take them in. And the whole time, you're not going to have any stress on your face. Nothing really in your shoulders except for what you're using to take the mat away. And next time your feet come together, try to deliberately squeeze your feet together. You can point the feet and maybe flex the toes. And then we'll come down. You can rest, you can let go. And we do one more thing here, so there'll be a little bit more hamstring focused. So you're gonna bend the legs. And we're gonna take that diamond shape so the knees are gonna go as wide as they comfortably can. Good. You're only going to press your heels together for this one. So you're too, yeah, exactly. So press your, your heels in with purpose. So they're just not sort of touching. Arms are optional. I'm going to put mine in front just because it makes it a little harder um, in some ways. Anyway, so press the heels in, belly draws in a little bit, and then lift the heels towards the sky. Good. And then we'll let the legs drop. Inhale. Exhale, little belly and a lot of glutes and hamstrings. Squeeze the heels at the top of your left. Good, come down. And then one more time. And then as you're doing this, think of it, when you come up to the top, let your feet separate. So it's almost like your legs are in a bit of a squat, except you're not flexing out the hips. So let your heels separate. Yeah, and more than that even if you want to. Mm -hmm. Good. Take your legs as wide as they'll go, far apart from each other. Good. Nice. All right. Take it down. All good. All right. Drag yourself up. Cool. So now, 
and then get into a squat. But we're going to use our muscles instead of just hanging out in our joints. So you can, if you want to, go down to the fullest extent of your squat. And then you'll press your heels down strongly. Usually the butt lifts a little bit. And then same thing we were just doing, like separate your feet, isometrically contract so your feet are like separating out. But usually lifts people a little more. And then use a little bit of your belly, just a little, not a lot. Continue to separate your heels out as you start to slowly raise your hips. Now your knees are only gonna straighten as much as they have to. Just think about raising your hips and pulling your feet out, out, out away from one another. Good, let your head hang. Your knees are still bent at least a little bit. Maybe not a full 90 degrees. Good. And then as we come down, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to hug the belly in just a little, press the heels out isometrically, and then come down. And then when you're ready, you can, if you want to sit down with or without your hand support, you can. And we'll come out. Ta da! And then you can stretch. Whatever stretch you want. We're not going to tax the hamstrings here. We're going to let the knees pop up whenever they want to as high as they want to. Good. We'll come up. And take the hands behind. As wide as you need to. We'll start with the feet wide more hamstring stuff. So um, if your feet can slide on the floor, I think, yeah, usually they can. Take the feet that wide, bend them just enough. If you need your feet flat, go ahead, but otherwise press the heels. All right, so from here, we'll um, press the heels of the hands into the floor so it sort of stretches the, the neck a little bit away from the shoulders. And then your belly's gonna come in just enough so you can lift your hips. You're not gonna touch your feet to the floor unless you need to. And then from here, if you want to, you can do slow slides of one leg out and then the other. But as my legs get longer, my belly's getting a little stronger. Accidental rhyme. And then um, you can slide your feet in. Doesn't matter if it takes the mat with you. So slide your feet. Yep, yep. There you go, there you go. You got a little cannoli there. Good, and then we can slide them out. And then now we slide them towards us. Yeesh, that's hamstring right there. And we'll come down. Okay. Now we'll do that two more times. Do you feel, did you feel your hamstring? Okay. I don't feel that stuff anymore. Not much, anyway. Mine are always sore. Yeah. Always up at the attachment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Again, this time if you want, you can start with your leg stretch, but I think it's, I think it's a little bit better. <laughs> Gotta fix that. There you go. All right, so lift up. Again, we're, just make, we're making sure, just like when we're on the bolster, we're not like just letting our hips um, hang out in space. We're actually drawing the belly in, and then you can stretch the legs out one at a time, and then you can make your little cannoli shell. You want to lift up higher you can through the through the pressing of the hands in towards one another and then we'll slide them out away from each other and then as much in as you can before your hamstrings cramp and then we can come down and then if you want we can do like a little a little bear pose little bear pose you could do a yogi toad off if you want to get taller in the low belly and then when you're ready, we'll transition to one more of those. So reach a mat. Pre-cannoli eyes. <laughs> and then exhale. So the belly goes in a little bit first before I lift. And then a little slide. And freestyle my cannoli. And if you want to, you could even Take one hand. Carefully, your arm has to be bent if you're going to swivel in your shoulder socket. That's kind of important. One hand, but your arm has to be bent. That's right. 
There you go, sliding in, good. Lovely. And we'll take it to um, Dandasana first. Just sit tall. And keep your feet about hip wide, hip width as we go into Paschimottanasana. Again, let the knees pop up however they want on each side, might be different. And then like we did in the squat before, we're going to do a twist. So take your right hand somewhere along the left leg, foot or ankle, and then turn your chest to the left. Good. And then we'll do it on the other side. Left hand to the right foot, ankle, or leg. Good. All right. And then if you can hook your fingers along the outer edge of your feet, you're going to you're gonna have a little, little miniature battle here. So your feet are gonna press forward. So they're trying to pull at your fingers, but then your fingers are gonna pull back. So you're gonna have a little resistance there. Good. Now, as we do that, if you can slide your feet in, great. If they don't slide on your mat, then we're gonna come up to that version of um, bear or navasana. We're going to roll back first, exactly, and then we'll come in and we're just going to try to create that resistance between our feet. If you have to bend your knees, do so. And create the resistance there that helps all the muscles kind of meet in the middle. And if you want to roll back one more time, you can. I'm kind of on the hard floor, so I got to do a little bit of good <laughs> And if you can come up with the straight legs, you know, 